The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who reward the merits of the just and offer pardon to sinners who do penance, have mercy, we pray, on those who call upon you, that the admission of our guilt may serve to obtain your pardon for our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I answer you. On the day of salvation, I help you. And I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to restore the land and allot the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come out, to those in darkness, show yourselves. Along the ways they shall find pasture, on every bare height shall their pastures be. They shall not hunger or thirst, nor shall the scorching wind uh, or the sun strike them. For he who pities them leads them and guides them beside springs of water. I will cut a road through all my mountains and make my highways level. See, some shall come from afar, others from the north and the west, and some from the land of Syene. Sing out, O heavens, and rejoice, O earth. Break forth into song, you mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and shows mercy to his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a mother forget her infant, be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. The word of the Lord. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Glory and to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus answered the Jews, My father is at work until now, so I am at work. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also called God his own father, making himself equal to God. Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, the son cannot do anything on his own, but only what he sees the father doing. For what he does, the son will do also. For the father loves the son and shows him everything that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these, so that you may be amazed. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, so also does the son give life to whomever he wishes. Nor does the father judge anyone but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life, and will not come to condemnation, but has passed from death to life. Amen, amen, I say to you, the hour is coming and is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so also he gave to the Son the possession of life in himself and he gave him power to exercise judgment because he is the son of man. Do not be amazed at this because the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come out, those who have done good deeds to the resurrection of life, but those who have done wicked deeds to the resurrection of condemnation. I cannot do anything on my own. I judge as I hear, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. having some allergy problems today. That's part of spring, even though it doesn't seem like we've had much spring weather here. It's been pretty cold and windy. Uh, spring is coming, though, I imagine. We read in the prophet Isaiah an interesting image of who God is. And people tend to not think about this aspect of God very much. They think about a powerful God. They think about the God that we call our Father. And what seems to be a natural result of that is that we think of God only as male, only as a man, only as, as uh, having just male characteristics, just limited to that, limited to that understanding. Now, the Catechism of the Church is very clear about this, though. It says that even though we call God Father, we don't think that God has gender, has sex. He doesn't have, uh, he isn't male or female. God is not like that. God is beyond all of that. He really encompasses all, all the emotions, all of the capabilities, all of the goodness. And we see that at the end of this reading, where uh, the prophet Isaiah has been told by God to speak about God in this way. Can a mother forget her infant, be without tenderness for the child of her womb? Even should she forget, I will never forget you. So we are ascribing these female characteristics to God, and that's okay. We should do that. That's, again, what the Catechism of the Church tells us to do. We shouldn't just be thinking about God as powerful or as other sort of, you know, characteristics that we associate with 
only men and not women. There's a whole problem in that, and I don't want to get into that today. That's a bigger problem. But what I want to say is that, is that there are times when we should focus on this and we should accept God for who he is. We should accept God for the completeness that he is and never try to, in one way or another, limit God and only think of God in one way. There's always more to know about God. There's always more to experience about God. There's always more, more than we can even fathom, more than we can manage. And so in this way, if we, if we accept this, we can see that God is for us and available to us in every situation, in every predicament, in every, every, every place we might find ourselves. He's always there for us and ready to give us exactly what we need, exactly what is needed in the particular situation. Now, in the gospel today, it can get a little bit confused, and I don't want to get too deep into it because John does this a lot, and it, it can get, sometimes it seems like he's talking in a circular argument or it seems like, what are we supposed to take from all of this? What I think he's trying to say in this section is that the oneness of the Father and the Son in the Trinity, that oneness that they experience, that togetherness that they experience, means that whatever is going on, whatever Jesus is doing, is the Father's work. Now he says this to Jews because they accept God the Father. They don't accept Jesus as God. They even think he's blaspheming because he's calling himself uh, the Son of God and making himself equal to God. So he's focusing on that. He's saying, well, when you see me do something, it is God who is God the Father who is doing this through me, making this thing happen. He's trying to get them to understand that Jesus is not some sort of renegade or some sort of uh, person uh, going in some opposite direction or some crazy path that is not consistent with what all that they believe. He's going on the very path that God the Father has laid out for him. He's following that path and they are together in that. So he talks about judgment. He talks about the other aspects of God that there will be a time of judgment that will happen. The, I suppose what he is trying to do in this particular instance is to help those uh, Jews to understand that there will be judged by their actions that will happen. There, there is this, you know, putting your faith into practice. But I think, again, more importantly, is recognizing Jesus and the Father as one, but really through the Holy Spirit. Recognizing that oneness, recognizing how they work together, recognizing that nothing is done that is contrary to either. It is all together, it is all um, agreed upon, if you will, by both of them, by the whole Trinity. It's really something that uh, that Jesus comes and does for us to show us this Father who loves, to show us how the Lord um, deals with us, and that we should not, again, just think about God as a powerful God or as a destroying God or as, a, um, uh, as uh, an entity just only wanting to wreak uh, um, destruction on people. He is there for all of us. And that's the same Lord that we take into us in the Eucharist. When we say that amen to him, again, we're not just acknowledging who we are receiving, we're doing more than that. We're accepting Jesus for who he is. We're really accepting God's presence in our lives by taking that presence physically into us. So. Uh, today as we continue our Lenten journey more than halfway through the Lenten season now, 
um, we uh, ask the Lord for that, uh, for that gracious help and to help us to accept him in the completeness of who he is um, in, the, um, in, in, the multiple, in, in the many and varied ways he presents himself uh, to us, all of them good, all of them with the goal of giving us goodness and helping us to respond in, with good action. So let's pray. Uh, we offer the Mass today for Jerry and Marion Brower. We pray to the Lord. We pray for families. May God pour out an abundance of grace to every family in the diocese that they may be domestic churches and dwellings of loving sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the people of Ukraine that the current hostilities will cease and that the nations of the world will respond generously to assist the needs of those suffering from wounds or the deprivation of the necessities of life. And we pray also for a success in our own uh, collection to benefit them. We pray to the Lord. We continue to offer uh, special prayers for Nancy Matt, uh, Susan Harrelson, Father Wilbur Thomas, James Raymond, Helen and Joe Self, we pray to the Lord. We pray for comfort and healing for Arlene, uh, uh, Justin Whalen, uh, Brandon, Marie, Anthony Settle, Madison Placencia, Christine Williams, Karen Metcalf, Jimmy Dean Paris, Sandra and Gary Coggins, Sherry Riley, Jerry uh, Jean Marr, and uh, we also uh, uh, pray for Connie Cathy as she recovers from her surgery. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the church that we may always be amazed by the works of God. We pray to the Lord. Um, any other petitions you'd like to offer? Lord, hear our prayer. 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 Let's close our prayers with the 50th anniversary prayer for the diocese. Heavenly Father, accept our humble prayer of praise and gratitude as we joyfully celebrate 50 years as the Diocese of Charlotte. Throughout our history, the faithful of Western North Carolina under the watchful care of esteemed bishops and abbots, have been nurtured by your providential hand. Confident that you invite your children to implore your constant blessings, we pray that you continue to pour forth your heavenly grace upon us. With filial affection and devotion, we further ask that you look kindly upon the prayers we seek through the intercession of our venerable patroness, the most blessed Virgin Mary, 
who with motherly attention tends to the needs and concerns of the church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through bodily fasting you restrain our faults raise up our minds and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him, the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joan of Arc and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us pray. May your heavenly gifts, O Lord, we pray, which you bestow as a heavenly remedy on your people, not bring judgment to those who receive them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. May your servants be shielded, O Lord, by the protection of your loving kindness, that doing what is good in this world, they may reach you their highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.